Hey there, and thanks for watching. In this Watch Me Build video, I'll be showing you how I prefer to partition an IRR in my real estate analysis. What you'll find when you open the model here is I have a blank tab, and this is where we're gonna be doing the Watch Me Build today. I also have a completed version, which you can find here. And then I've added a IRR partitioning module, and this module actually is just meant to be uh, inserted into your own model. So you just bring over some monthly cash flows and it will automatically cal calculate or automatically partition, if you will, the IRR both on a monthly and annual basis. But let me show you how to actually do this uh, exercise. So uh, here I've already inserted a year or a date header. I have my labels in terms of the types of cash flows that we're going to be bringing over. My net cash flow line will be calculating IRR and equity multiple for a 10 year analysis. And then I have my partition and, and I'm actually going to do an IRR partition, which is what I prefer to do. But there are situations where an equity multiple partition is valuable as well. So we'll do that here. Now, first, why do or why partition the internal rate of return? Well, really it's to understand where your returns are coming from. So you may buy an asset with some guaranteed income stream out into the future, maybe an investment grade tenant, what have you, or maybe they're more uh, hypothetical, more speculative, and so you believe that you'll get some income stream going out into the future. And then you have some assumption for how much the property will be worth at the end of your analysis period. And those are two very different assumptions. And the IRR partition allows you to understand how those different income streams, operating income or what we call reversion cash flow or the, the appreciation over your hold period, how those impact your IRR. And because appreciation in most instances is more speculative than income, the greater proportion of your IRR that's attributable to the reversion cash flow or the appreciation over the analysis period, the higher the risk is of the investment. So let's get started. The first thing we'll do is we're going to be dropping in investment cash flow, operating cash flow, and reversion cash flows into our model here. And if you're an accelerator member, you're familiar with this framework. For those who are unfamiliar, the anatomy of a typical DCF includes three types of cash flows. Investment cash flows, which are those outflows that you spend generally early in the analysis period in order to acquire some string of positive cash flows going out into the future. Your operating cash flows are the income generated by the property. And because you spent the investment cash flow, you get, hopefully, this positive cash flow of income. We call those operating cash flows. And then we have reversion cash flows, which is the value of the asset generally at sale. And in most cases, that's a return of any capital that was invested as part of your investment cash flow, together with some appreciation or value growth over the analysis period. So here, let's assume that we'll spend 50,000 to acquire this property. And then over the 10 year hold, we earn, or we project, oops, to earn this string of income. Okay, this, uh, in our nomenclature, we call it cash flow from operation. Uh, there's, there's different ways of describing it, but it's basically NOI minus CapEx gives you cash flow from operation. You'll sometimes see it referred to as cash flow before financing. Here we're calling it cash flow from operations or CFO. Okay. So that's our income that we earn from the property over the hold period. And then at the end, we think that, okay, let's say that we paid 50,000 for upfront. Let's imagine that we believe that it will double in value over the next 10 years. So that's our appreciation. Pay 50,000 for it today, sell it for 100,000 10 years from now. So our net cash flow then is the sum of those three cash flow sections in each period. Right, so we spent 50,000 in time zero. We earn some amount of income from the property every year. And then in the end, 106,589 is our reversion plus our net income in the final period. We can then calculate an IRR on that. We use the equals IRR function. 
15.5% IRR. And then there's an equity multiple. And uh, I'll just use the common logic taught in the accelerator, which is we just sum all of the positive cash flow from our net cash flow line. And we divide it by the absolute value of all of the negative cash flows. Or in other words, inflows divided by outflows that gives us our equity multiple. And with our property cash flows in place, now we can do the partition. And we're going to partition again cash flow from operation or our operating cash flow. We'll partition out the reversion cash flow or our sale, the appreciation. We'll find out what the total is. We'll calculate the present value for each. And then we'll see what percentage of the total present value cash, ca uh, cash flows are uh, from income and what percentage are from appreciation. And that will, uh, that, that's the partition that will tell us if this, this investment is more about income or more about appreciation. So first we need to link over the cash flow from operation. We can either manually do that going equals year one equals year two equals year three. It's kind of tedious, especially if we're doing this on a monthly basis. So I'm going to use an offset function. I go equals offset. I choose a reference cell, that cell there, hit F4 on that. And then it asks, okay, how many rows up or down away from our reference cell should we return? And in this case, we'll return no rows up or down. Columns, we want to move uh, one column to the right for every year that we move forward. So we'll say year one, we want to move over one. Year two, we'd move two. Year three, we'd move three and so forth. So we'll just link to B14. Close parentheses. And now as we copy this down, and I'll co copy as formulas only, which is Alt-H-V-F if you're using a PC. We sum those up. 56, 5, 47. We can do an air check by summing this row, and we see it's the same. So that's correct. We can now borrow this formula, and I'm actually gonna edit it slightly. B14, I'm gonna lock in the column, F4, one, two, three times. That way when I copy this to here, you'll see that the only thing that needs to change now is that reference. So we'll reference now the reversion cash flow line, copy this down, Alt H, V, F, sum that up, and you see the total between the two, 156, 147. If we do an air check, equals the sum of these two rows, you'll see 156, 147. Now we can also do the total here. This is just the total cash flow on a nominal basis or before taking into account the time value of money. So now we're going to do a present value calculation. And there's two ways to do this. The first is we use the present value annuity factor formula, uh, which looks like this. You go equals, and we take the value that we want to calculate or that we want to discount. We divide it by open parentheses, one plus a discount rate. Now the discount rate we'll be using is the IRR. Hit F4 on that, close parentheses, and we'll raise this to the year in which we're in. And I'll hit F4 one, two, three times to lock that in. Now, why did we discount this by the IRR? Well, if you recall, the definition of IRR is the discount rate at which NPV or net present value is equal to zero. Or in other words, when we calculate the present value of all of our nominal cash flows using the IRR as our, di as our discount rate, the sum of those present values, uh, those present value cash flows should be equal to our investment cash flow in time zero, assuming there are no investment cash flows in subsequent years. And you'll see that now. So let's copy this formula down, sum it up, and then borrow this entire formula. And it is, and then we add these all up. And I can just borrow this formula there and sum it up. And sure enough, 50,000. So the present value of the investment plus reversion or, or sale cash flows is equal to 50,000, which happens to be our time zero cash flow. 
Again, that's because we used our IRR as a discount rate. And so once we've done this, we have our cash flows in place. Now we can calculate or we can partition the IRR. And we do that. And, and again, because the IRR is the discount rate, all we need to do then is say, okay, what percentage of the total is the present value cash flows for the operating or the, the income portion? Hit F4 on the total. You see that 52.8% comes from income, 47.2% come from appreciation. Now, we see about 50-50. So if we're buying, if we are a, a value investor, a investor, an investor who cares more about just long-term steady income, we're not looking for opportunistic, we're not looking for big value appreciation, then this, val this, this investment is kind of middle of the road. Now let's imagine though that it was that uh, we didn't think there was any creation in value over the 10 years. So we would sell it for 50,000 10 years later. You'll see now two thirds of the IRR is related to income, one third from reversion. If we didn't think there was any value in the property at the end of 10 years, and that happens sometimes, right? Uh, maybe it's a leasehold interest as an example. And so the property reverts or the improvement reverts back to the, the ground uh, lessor, you'll see 100% of the IRR, which isn't a, it's a meager IRR of 2.2%, but 100% of the IRR is attributable to the income. Okay, let's come back to where we started. Uh, so That's how we partition an IRR. Now, what about equity multiple? Uh, first off, you rarely see equity multiple partition because uh, these are nominal values or, or values without taking into account time value of money or inflation, in other words. And therefore, um, there's not a lot of value in partitioning the IRR, but maybe you might want to do this. So if you did, what you do is you come and you take the total, not the present value, but the, the total actual cash flow. You just copy this all the way down. And then let's take, and then the total again, oops, is this line there. And then the exercise is the same. What proportion comes from income? 36. What proportion comes from sales? 63.9, right? And that's just raw cash flow without, without uh, the time value of mo money component to it. Again, you go to zero, now you're going to see 100%. You go to 50,000, you'll see it's almost 50-50, a little bit more income. So again, that's how you partition an IRR. A little bonus on how to partition an equity multiple. Let me know if you have any questions on this exercise. Otherwise, thanks for your time.